Well, 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 what do we have here? A new Butterick release? I was really starting to wonder if Butterick was going to be around anymore. They hadn't released a new collection since the fall of 2021. Um, so it had been about six months. And they just skipped winter. They skipped holiday. Um, so I was I was nervous. But then all of a sudden, here we are. So I am so excited. I love Butterick patterns. Um, definitely have my fair share in my stash. So I'm excited to see what we've got after the little hiatus that we went on. If you are new here, I'm Lindsay. I make all my own clothes and talk about it on this channel. These Source Impression Friday videos are a fan favorite. I'm so glad you found them. We're going to review every single pattern in this Butterick collection. Um, be sure to check the playlist if you want to see past collections that I have reviewed. <clears throat> okay, so first things first, we have this Mrs. Jacket, Dress, Top, Pants, and Sash. This is one of my favorite things about Butterick is they do these like wardrobe collections where you get so many patterns in one and when they go on sale, um, Butterick will go down to $1.99, $2.99 at Joanne. I mean, it's pennies for each of these patterns. Now, I also want to say before we get too far into this, Butterick does tend to style for a more mature style. Um, that's a little more conservative, a little bit more buttoned up, you know, longer neat, longer hem links, you know, not a lot of cleavage, covering the arms, all that kind of stuff. The styling is also probably going to be mostly on an older looking woman. I don't know how old she is, but you know, a more mature woman, <clears throat> same thing with the accessories, nothing too flashy, nothing crazy. Um, so keep that in mind as we're looking, because that can sometimes sway you into thinking that you don't like something. Um, when we get to the line drawings, really try and just analyze based on the line drawing and none of this styling and fabrication and all of that. Okay. So this is a lined open front short jacket with contrast binding trim, sleeveless square neck top and dress have back zipper and sash wide leg pants have a side zipper. I love a side zipper moment. Okay, so for this, let's take a look at the jacket. Pretty simple, straightforward. I Is that princess seeming? I can't tell. I Maybe not. Um, really nice little fitting sleeve here. I love like where it attaches at the shoulder. Um, high neck, uh, no collar, no closures on this jacket. I think this yellow fabric might be some kind of jacquard. Then we have the cutie little dress. Okay, we do have a dart here. Um, and the square neckline is really nice. I love this bodice. And then all of them seem to have this like contrast band on the bottom. There's the top um, and the pant. The illustrations do look updated, right? Um, okay, so here she is. And again, they made this in a jacquard. So a jacquard is a little bit more of a stiffer, less drapey, heavyweight fabric, but you can see for the top, it's blousey. And even for this, it looks a little bit drapier. So I'm interested to see what they recommend for fabric. Um, the sash is not necessary. It's not really cinching anything in on this. Yeah, and I guess I like the band well enough. I don't know. It seems a little out of place without the jacket, right? The with jacket with the piping kind of tied it all in. This feels a little bit like she ran out of fabric. Lots of pictures. Love that. Um, here we are from the back view, center back zip. This feels... <laughs> I mean, I don't know about that, guys. That's... You can't really bend over. Huh. That's a choice. I don't know why it's, like, not come together. Like, why is it, like, a pie piece? I don't like that. That does not look great. Okay, and then this is what the pattern envelope cover will look like. Here are our line drawings. So this is the part that I like to pay the most attention to. 
Um, the other things are great to assess kind of how the drafting fits, which I think is actually really good. Um, but here are the line drawings. We have, like I said, the jacket with the little dart. Um, the dress has a lot of darting, which I really love. We've got a bust dart here. We've got fisheye darts in the front and the back. That is why this was able to be fitted so beautifully to her body. Where was the one of just her in the dress with no sash? No such thing? Okay. But so that's why it fits her so well. Um, they were really able to take it in using those darts um, all the way around to, you know, highlight all the best parts. Um, like I said, the square neckline I really love. And then here's the top. Um, there's your sash. This doesn't look anything like what it looked like on her. I don't know what happened if they had to make an alteration last minute. I'm not sure. But this feels like a very, very not professional way to do a slit. Um, I'd be finding another pattern piece and trying to do more of a vent. Yeah. Um, this works great for like a front thigh slit or something, but going up into your crotchal area, no thank you. And then for the pants, we have just a couple of darts in the front and a couple in the back, not my fave. Um, they didn't really show the pants on, did they? No. All we have is the illustration of that. So hard to say how those would fit, but they are pretty basic. I'm just happy they don't have an elastic waist. There, We went through several moments, several seasons of a ton of elastic waist pants, and it seems like we have moved on from that, which is good. Um, but as a curvy, pear-shaped girl, I can't I have no confidence that these would fit me right out of the right out of the gate. Okay, let's take a look at the pattern back. Cotton blends, ponty, gabardine, crepe, tweed, and linen. So they are recommending more kind of like stable, not so much drapey fabrics, but I definitely think that the top you could make out of just about anything. There's no reason you couldn't make that out of a chalet or something really lightweight. The jacket probably needs to be a little structured. The dress probably needs to be a little structured as well. Um, but the top, I think, is a little bit, there's a little bit of wiggle room there. Uh, your notions are bias tape, that's for that accent around the jacket. Invisible zipper for the dress and the top and the pants. And then twill tape also for the pants. So that's probably what is creating your waistband. Two size, uh, two sizes of this pattern, 8 to 16 and then 16 to 24. I do love when you have an overlapping size. So if you're in between sizes... You could grab both of them, both pattern sizes, and then let's say you need the waist to be a 14 and you need the hip to be an 18. That's a bad example, but you know what I mean. You could lay this pattern over this pattern, line up the number 16s, and that's how you would be able to grade between them. So that's why I like whenever we have an, over, ooh, that was fun, an overlapping size. What does that translate to, though? We have bust line waistline and hip line finished measurements. Thank you so much. So bust line goes from the jackets, much more loose fitting about three inches more ease in the jacket. The dress is close fitting. So this is a more, a better representation of the actual, like who this will fit. Um, the bust goes from 35 and a half to 50 inches. The waistline of the dress, 27 and a half up to 42. And the hip of the pant, 37 and a half up to 52. So that's a decent size range. Of course, not the most inclusive, I understand. But better than what we do see in some big four patterns. So happy er about that. <laughs> and then our fabric requirements are here. Um, yeah, not a ton of fabric too. This little top could be a one-year wonder if you um, 
Well, that doesn't make a whole lot of sense though. Why are the smaller sizes one and five eighths and the larger sizes one and a quarter? I think this got flipped around and the one and a quarter is supposed to be over here. So then about one and a half for the larger sizes. That makes more sense. Okay, there you go, Butterick 6882. Next up, this little like, I don't know, I'm getting like sailor vibes. Uh, high waist princess seam dress has A-line shape, sleeve variations, decorative buttons, and back invisible zip. Views A and B have a collar. Separate pattern pieces are included for your bust cups. Okay, so remember the buttons are not functional. These are just decorative. So if you're not feeling like you want buttons right at your bust apex, I feel you. I don't really want buttons there either, especially not these gigantic shank buttons. So let's try and look at this without those because it, they're pointless. Um other than decoration, and I can't say they're doing a lot in the decorative, you know, they're they're not great decoration on top of that. But the high-waistedness of it all is nice. There's a high waist seam here. Um, then you have these little flaps that I think are not actual pockets. I think again, this is decoration to just adorn this. Here it is without any of that. I mean, they did, they did leave the buttons on, but um, you can see the princess seaming is actually really nice. If you took off the buttons and took off the flaps and just looked at this for what it is seam wise, I think it's actually really great. I love a little collar. I love a princess seam into the shoulder. We don't see that a lot. A lot of times they'll go into the arm side right here. So I love a shoulder moment. And then you have your like paneled skirt. Um, also because it's high waist, it's going to give you like legs for days, which is really nice. Here it is in just a different fabrication. There is the back. They didn't add anything to the back, which is nice. And then we have the three sleeves that they mentioned. So we've got the, I don't know, I guess short sleeve, three quarter sleeve and sleeveless. One thing I do want to point out now that I'm looking at the sleeve, we'll come back to the line drawing. This picture isn't showing it really well. Neither is this one, but this one does. So you can see here that we've got like a sleeve cap that's coming up and over her shoulder. And then all of this is pulling away from her body. Instead of following the natural curve of her body, it's creating like, you know, this little gap, which to me means this is not big enough. The the sleeve cap is not big enough to go up and old over her shoulder. Now maybe she has like really nicely formed biceps or whatever. I don't know. Is that a bicep way up there on your shoulder? Or the pattern most likely is just not drafted well enough. So you'd have to add a little bit of ease into the sleeve cap there. Other than that though, the fit looks pretty good. Um, Maybe a little bit low on the arm side, which is what's creating kind of some of this pulling, but very minimal. Very, very, very minimal. Um, okay, so back to the line drawings. Where were they? Oh, too fast. Um, so again, not my favorite with the buttons and the flaps. But when you take all that away, I think it's a really cute, basic little dress that you could use to highlight some beautiful fabrics. You could do a lot of fun things with stripes. Um, so try and think of it that way. This one here also has a slit in the sleeve, which I missed the first time, but I love a princess seam moment. I love all that you can, I mean, I bet the fabric um, requirements on this are not that much because there are so many seams. Crepe, poplin, ponte, linen, and lightweight wool. Um, all of that makes perfect sense. I think you could probably even go into, yeah, I mean, it is A-line, so you want it to be a little bit structured. So yeah, all those mid-weight wovens are probably best. Um, and zipper, a six buttons, bias tape, maybe for the neckline, I'm guessing. And then buttons for B, 10 buttons for B. Why was that? Oh, it buttons down further. You know, 
That actually might help. Right? Doesn't that look more intentional than just boob buttons? Yeah, I, I don't know. I'm iffy on the buttons. It kind of looks like a coat, which is kind of cool, a coat dress. Um, and then buttons, buttons, buttons. Okay, now we have the two size ranges here, 6 to 14 and 14 to 22. So we do have the overlap again, but we're missing a size. We've got an extra small size, but not another large size. Does that make sense? They opted for the more petite sizes than the full uh, plus size sizes. Uh, fabric requirements, like I said, two yards across the board for the sleeveless dress. And then you add sleeves and it's really only a little bit more, um, because you have so many small pattern pieces. I love that. I love a dress out of two yards of fabric. I think that that's, that's a great economical dress that you make yourself. Here are our bust cups. So remember, that is the other nice part about this is that you have the other bust cups. So again, even if the buttons and the flaps and all that are not your vibe, but you like to have bust cups, this is a great princess seamed kind of basic sloper for you to use as a jumping off point for all kinds of things. Um, our finished waist measurement, uh, 29 up to 42 and a half. Finished hip, it's a loose fitting um, skirt. So that's going to be a lot larger. So the bust is really the most fitted part here. And um, they only gave us the finished measurements for bust cup C and D, but they do offer bust cups also in an AB. So I don't know why that was left off, maybe by accident, but regardless, probably somewhere around an inch smaller, right? We can just kind of assume that. So 36 and a half up to 50 for the AB cup, and then your C and your D. All right. Next up, we have, this looks pretty cute. I'm into these like little peasanty dresses still. Um, high waist dress has square neckline, again, with the square neckline, with tucks and sleeve variations, and gathered full skirt has flounced hem options. I love a flounced hem. What do we have here? Okay, square neckline with these tucks here. This fabric I feel like is not the best. I guess they were trying to go for something tropical, but I think it's just missing the mark just a little bit. Um, but anyways, you have these tucks here, princess seams. There's elastic in the shoulder, big puffy sleeve with a cuff. And you can see the cuff is being pulled up again. Which again, even though this sleeve is nice and full, something's happening to cause this to be to pull up here. Probably within this shoulder situation. Then you have a waist seam, albeit wonky, like not straight across. That might I think that's just due to the nature of this fabric that they chose. You have a gathered seam there. And then this is supposed to be a flounced ruffle, but it looks like it's been gathered, not flounced. Um, flounce would look more like it would be flowy on the bottom, but there wouldn't be puckers here. Almost more like a circle skirt. So maybe that's just a miss, you know, they mistype here on the description. Here it is. Um, in a little floral, again, you can see the tucks, you've got this, um, kind of flutter sleeve, which they've adorned with some kind of trimming, which is really sweet. Princess seams again, the sleeve actually goes into this princess seam. That's a detail I missed on the other version as well. And then this is an even longer version. Is that what's happening? Oh, and also elastic um, arm, uh, sleeve hem. Yeah, I just, yeah, maybe this is just not my favorite fabric and that's why I'm having a hard time because I do really like this. I do really like this. Um, <laughs> yeah, let's look at the line drawings. That might help. This is so cute. This is the one that the model is wearing. It also has these um, 
it's not a cuff like I thought. It's actually like a pleat detail um, and clearly gathers on both. So nothing's flounced. I really like it. Um, this version I wish maybe had three tiers, which wouldn't be hard to do. These are just squares that you tack on. Um, yeah, it's cute. I'm nervous to see how much fabric this is going to take. Shally crepe, double Georgette, cotton blends, and lightweight linen. So these fabrics here, these first three, are going to be lightweight, obviously, and that is what is going to create this hem. The, the, there's a chance that the fabric, even though this is supposed to be on the straight grain, is growing, and that's what's causing this to happen. The weight of the skirt is kind of pulling it down on the areas where it's most... Uh, it's likely to stretch out. That doesn't bother me too much. It really doesn't. Um, maybe it's kind of one of those unavoidable things, but nonetheless, if you that does bother you a lot, these cottons and linens, well, the linen, depending on how tightly woven it is, but it would be a little bit better. Um, you could definitely, they said cotton blends, but I think you could definitely do, you know, full-on cotton too. There's nothing... The more structured that the fabric is, like the less drape that it has, the more that this will kind of just float away from your body and give even more of that like peasanty, big, full skirt vibe, which maybe this could use. Okay, invisible zipper, elastic for the shoulder, lace for the trim, um, and then, okay, great. And so then the... Um, Sizing on this one is the 8 to 16 and 16 to 24. Fabric-wise, yes. Okay, so we need 3 yards for the flouncy sleeve version, up to close to 4 yards for the maxi. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Um, and actually, the fact that it's under 4 yards for the largest size is, is pretty decent. Meaning, like, it could have been worse. Bust line measurement, it's all that's really applicable here. I agree with only including this. It's 34 inches up to 48 and a half. And even the bust is pretty loose fitting. So, cute. Ooh, here for this. Okay, we've got a wrap dress and sash. Wrap dress has extended shoulders, which I think means drop sleeve with sleeve variations, skirt and length variations, and self-sash closure. That's kind of hard to say. So, self-sash, which is a sash made of the self-fabric. Self-sash closure, okay. Beautiful, like, wrap uh, coverage, right? It's a higher neckline. Um, barely any of her cleavage is showing. And if she is a plus size woman, you know, you guys have a lot more cleavage than the smaller girls do. Um, again, with this pulling, I don't know what is happening. Maybe with this, it's a little bit more expected because there is no way to like fully, like there's no sleeve cap to like really compensate for that. But when I see it three times in a row, it's a little bit like, mm, I don't know about, something. Um, and then it just wraps and comes down. This one's ankle length. Here is the illustration. <laughs> um, we do have a bust dart. I love this little ruffle detail. I love the ruffle around the hem too. I love that they gave her a sassy pose and a big, big smile. Here it is in a print. Oh, and the bubble sleeve with the elastic hem. This is cute. I want to see how this closes, though. Yeah, we're going to have to look at the notions to see about the closures, but I like it. I like it a lot. Um, okay, let's look at that. So, Shally, Cotton Blends, Crepe, Rayon. This is probably, I don't know if this is a cotton, but it looks like Ankara. It could be, like, 
an Ankara fabric. You could also go into um, linen. I mean, you could do any fabric for this. Any light to medium weight fabric for sure. So the sizing on this is 18 to 24 and then 26 to 32. Now remember, an 18 in women's is not the same as an 18 in misses. They're cut from different blocks. So if you've ever thought to yourself that you your measurements fit into a size 18, but something's off, something doesn't fit right, it's not curvilicious enough for you, try an 18 woman's. Um, I don't know exactly how the numbers translate, like the bust measurement for an 18 misses and a bust measurement for an 18 woman's. Um, you might have to size down, but like in the hip, I am a 20, 22 misses. Um, so not that the hip really matters on this one, but like I'm a 16 in the bust and then a 20, 22 in the hip. Um, so I could, that would be interesting to try and make a women's dress obviously in my size and see, I think it's just going to be probably drafted for a fuller bust, which I don't have. Um, yeah, that would be, I should do that. Try and find like two comparable designs and see how the fit is different. And maybe it's better. I don't know. Okay. So we have two buttons and a yard of elastic. But the elastic is just for B, so that's not helping with the closure. Oh, for the sleeve. Okay, so all there is in here are two buttons. So I imagine you wrap it right to, close to your body, button it on the inside, and then wrap the other side over, button it on the outside, and then the sash covers those buttons, I think. Yardage wise, we've got around three, three and a half yards for A, which is the ruffly version. B is the sleeved with the ruffle hem. That is going up to four yards. And then the version that the model is wearing is up to five yards. Bus line measurement 43 to 57. Waistline, 33 to 47, and then no hip measurement because I guess it's there's just so much ease there. It's cute, though. I really like it. Okay, we've got a Butterick Retro 19, 19 what? 50s dress, slim or full skirted dress, has a cutaway cape collar, a cutaway cape collar and buttoned bodice. View A has contrast detachable collar, elbow sleeves, and peg top skirt. View B has contrast ribbon and back, no over collar and short sleeves. And we literally get two pictures. We get this one. They did not make any samples. They just didn't even bother. <laughs> Which is so annoying. We talk a lot about these vintage patterns in the comments section and how we wished that they would make them, make a sample, make it modern, make it look like something we might want to wear today that doesn't feel like a costume. I know that a lot of you are into like the vintage aesthetic. Um, but for those of us that are like not trying to necessarily like pinpoint a vintage vibe. There are some of these vintage garments that I actually might wear if I could visualize them in a more modern fabric um, styling. I mean, a lot of times when they do make versions of this, the hair is like quaffed and there's the curls and it's just like so much. Like, can we not just put it like on a normal like, how would you wear this every day without letting everyone know, I'm wearing a vintage design? Either way, we have a grown-on sleeve. 
we have really long waist darts, a little hip um, or waist uh, pleat. Back has darts. There's also darts in the bottom of the sleeve here. And then the fuller skirt. Now, does is that paneled? I can't tell. Oh, or it's pleated. It's just pleated. And then the little grown-on sleeve. The collar comes off of one of these. And then you have your self belt. Oh, that's the back. Okay, this is the back. This is that little ribbon detailing they were mentioning on the back. All right, yardage, shantung, fail, crepe, sheer or lightweight wools, linen, PK, cotton, broadcloth. So all pretty structured, woven, mid-weight fabrics. Buttons, ribbon, buckle for the belt. Yardage wise for the slim skirt, up to three yards. Oh, and the sizing is six to 14 and then 14 to 22. Um, and then the fuller skirt goes up to four yards. Bust line measurement, pretty fitted, three, 33 and a half up to 47. Same for the waist, also fitted. And then the hip line for the fitted skirt, again, pretty fitted here, 39 to 52 and a half. Okay, now we have a fun little mommy and me situation. <laughs> I love their little faces. Children and Mrs. Top and Skirt. Pull over cropped top with elastic shirt back. Has shoulder ties. Raised waist top. Raised waist top? Ends at high hip, so there's another version of the top, I guess, and has elastic shirt back, side slits and shoulder ties. Pull on skirt has front drape that starts above the knee and dips to mid calf, and back, the back dips to mid calf. Okay, there's kind of a lot to unpack here. Starting with the tops, um, <laughs> it's interesting to me that the design of the girls top and the women's top is the exact same. Like the women don't get darts. They don't get cups. They don't, it's just like the fact that we grew boobs is <laughs> irrelevant <laughs> in this pattern. Um, even with like the really big strap bow detail, like I don't, I mean, I like whenever moms and kids look the same, but not like the same, like you're just wearing a bigger kids version. Um, we have an elastic waist skirt. It does have a button here. It makes me think that like some kind of wrap is happening. Is that how they're able to pull this off? Her little face is just so sweet. Um, and then it's a high low hem. So the wrong side of your fabric will show. This is actually pretty decent. Sometimes you'll have fabric that's really colorful on one side and then stark white on the inside. Um, that bothers me to no end. Um, so if you do a print, find one that, you know, the contrast is not as drastic. Okay, here's the other top. We do get a princess seam here. Same big shoulder ties. Kind of pulls away from the body a little bit like a peplum and then um, has little side slits. And then there's the girl's version of that. Here's the back with the shirring. Now, is this actual shirring or they're throwing elastic casings in there? Because if they keep calling that shirring, I'm going to be really upset. Sassy, sassy. Um, okay, there's the cover. Here are our line drawings. They're definitely elastic casings, which isn't shirring. These are elastic casings, so I don't know why they keep doing that. Plus, not to mention, like, actual shirring is easier, I think, than these elastic casing things they make you do anyways. So I don't know why they don't just do the shirring. Anyways, the top does have princess seams. I missed that. Um, which I should have guessed after seeing the, the illustration, but 
Um, but so does the little girls. So, yeah, I just, I, I don't know about this as an adult. I love this as for a child, even for a teenager, maybe. Ugh, I just don't see myself, like, wearing this even to, like, a birthday party or a barbecue. It feels very juvenile and, you know, probably doesn't help that they showed it right next to an actual juvenile. So <laughs> there's that. I do think this has, this button has something to do with how they're able to get this straight. The skirt is pretty. The skirt is really nice. And I think you could make a lot of really great comfy versions of that. I just, this top just feels like young. Right? When it looks appropriate on her, for her age, maybe it's the fabric too. I don't know. There's I, something about it. Not sitting great. All right. Cotton, linen, gauze, and silky types. Um, a lot of elastic, bias tape. And then we've got size combinations, three to eight for the girls, and then small to one X for the women's. Yes, for the misses. So little one yard wonder for the top. Uh, the crop top. The longer one goes into, um, well, the little girls are still a one yard wonder, but the misses go up to just about one and a half. Then the skirt takes up to two yards. Hip line measurement, which honestly, like it's not a fitted hip at all. I'd rather have gotten the waistline measurement. 27 up to 49 and a half. Okay, now look at this fun little number. Shirts, pants, and shorts. Okay, now this is a crop top set that I could get behind. Buttoned front shirts have dropped sleeves and pointed collar. The longer sleeve version is cropped above the waist. The short sleeve view is hip length with side slits. Okay, so like a tunic. Wide leg pants with front and back darts have shaped high waist, back zipper, and patch pockets. Above knee length shorts view also included. Okay, so the top. A little bit of a drop shoulder, set in sleeve, Kind of narrows down to right below your elbow, button front, and then they put a little elastic casing in and cropped it right at the waist. Front patch pocket, collars, cute. The pants have this shaped waistband. You can see there's even like seaming within the waistband in order to give it that shape. Or is that not even a waistband? That is not even a waistband. That's the dart. So this is all one piece. Interesting. And then you have patch pockets and this little V, which you don't have to sew the V. You can leave the V out. There it is as a short. And then this is the same top, believe it or not, um, lengthened to that kind of tunic length. So you get really... I mean, those are two very different tops. I'm not sure about this staying up. Uh, is it just me or does it seem like that would be, well, when you look at it this way, I uh, don't love the exposed zipper. That's an interesting choice. And does it have to go so low? I mean, that is like a really low zipper. Am I right? But this is so super fitted. Um, and definitely a, um, um, it's not a wedgie, but it's close. There's not a lot of fabric through here. So, but everything below it does look really good. I just don't know how long it would be before all this started to stretch out and then the pants fell off. Because I have pants, Vogue pants, 
that are designed like this, right? They kind of come up onto the waist and they have darting, but they also had boning, um, which helped keep them up. I just don't know what is keeping these up. Maybe y'all can help me in the comments. Am I just, is this just like, I'm overthinking this and like, it's fine. Um, Cause it just seems like all this, especially in that linen or whatever she was wearing would just stretch out in no time. Okay. Yardage. Cotton, linen, poplin, and denim. And then the tops you can also make out of silky types and shirtings. Um, elastic for the top, the crop top, buttons, and exposed zipper. I don't get the exposed zipper going into your butt crack. I don't get that. That seems painful. Um, 6 to 14 and then 16 to 24. So... This is how they're able to get a smaller size and a larger size by not having one overlap. I guess there's a reason why they're limited to five sizes per category, per size category. I just wish they weren't. <laughs> I just wish they didn't limit it to five. I mean, our indie friends are doing like 20 sizes in one. So I don't know why they can't do that. At least one more. Where they could do a 6 to 16 and then a 16 to 24 or something like that. All right. The shirts, one and a half yards-ish, no matter which version you're making. Which is interesting because you would think the longer one would require more fabric. But that's how pattern Tetris works. Um, and then the pants, two and a half ish shorts, one and a half ish bust line measurement there. It's kind of a loose, um, top 38 to 53 and a half the waistline for the pants are not given. The hip line is 36 to 51 and a half, which the waist on the pants is far more fitted than the top. So I don't know why they're not showing that, but I, I could get behind this if I felt confident that this wouldn't just like fall down within an hour of wearing it. All right. Now we've got a little jumpsuit, sash and belt. Um, elastic waist jumpsuit has asymmetrical button front back zipper and sleeve variations. View A and B have pockets and tapered leg pants. View C has pockets and wide leg crop pants. View A and C have a sash. View B has a D-ring belt. A D-ring belt? Yeah, that's very 70s, but like we need to bring those back. That's cute. I like that a lot more than like a bow. Maybe that's what I'm over about the sashes is the big giant bow that you have to have. I love the D-ring. That's super cute. So we've got another somewhat modest crossover here. This one's obviously a surplus bodice, meaning it's not a true wrap. Then you've got your collar. Again, very 70s, all of this here. You've got a grown-on, not a grown-on, a sewn-in sleeve with a button tab. There's an elastic waist in here. Um, and then this is the tapered leg. Here it is, sleeveless. There is the wide leg crop and then a bubble sleeve. Here's the back, center back zip. Yeah, the pants look pretty good. You know, through the crotch area. Yeah, okay. Here are our line drawings. Yeah, I don't see anything uh, negative about this. It just comes down to whether you like the style or not. The buttons are probably unnecessary. If that was like a little bit too much 
hoo-ha for you. Cotton blends, crepe, gabardine, linen, and chalet. You need elastic, buttons, bias tape for the sleeveless version. D-rings. Yeah, nothing outrageous there. We do have the, what I'm going to call the extended size range within misses because it goes from 6 to 24. Um, fabric wise, that's your interfacing. View A was, what was view A? View A is the sleeveless version. So three and a quarter, up to three and a quarter yards for that. The tapered long pant with the sleeve, three and five eighths. And then the wide leg pant with the bubble sleeve, three and five eighths. Pretty loose fitting at the bodice. Not pretty. It's kind of like semi fitted, 34 and a half up to 50. Your waistline is elastic. So, I mean, if you did it exactly how they said, up to 52 inches. And then your hip line, your hip measurement only goes up to 51 and a half on these. Not the best, not the worst. All right, now we've got, this is very traditional Butterick. It's a Katherine Tilton design. She's been with Butterick probably longer than I've been alive. Um, very into the patchworky, asymmetrical funkiness of it all. And a lot of hand pick stitching. So if this is your vibe, you love Katherine Tilton. If it's not, then you're just moving on to the next one. Loose fitting pullover top has asymmetrical hem and neckline. View A has decorative pick stitch and contrast back pockets. View B is color blocked. So you've got this funky little neckline with this little doodad here, a little pleat, a seam, a grown on sleeve with a little baby sleeve, one princess seam, very asymmetrical, right? The whole thing is like just funky and off and nothing makes sense. I bet these are a ton of fun to put together, right? Where everything doesn't really match up. Here's the color blocked version. Catherine Tilton also loves a tunic, loves a tunic. Right? They're fun and different and unique and very artsy, I think is the best way to explain it. Here are our line drawings. All right. Yardage, cotton blends, interlock, cotton knits, and novelty wovens. Because it's not really fitted anywhere, you can make it out of knits or wovens. And then we have extra small to medium and then large to 2x. Um, and all you need is some embroidery floss as a notion to do that pick stitching. Two and a quarter yards of fabric total for the one that was like all one. And then, oh wait, I lied. They both have contrast? No. What's happening here? Top A is which one? Oh, okay. So there is a little bit of contrast in A in the pockets, just three eighths of a yard. So for the most part, two and a quarter yards to make the whole top. And then if you want to do the color blocking version, you need three different fabrics. Bust line measurement goes up to 60 inches because it's so loose fitting. All right. Here we have a Mrs. Tunic with sash and top. Okay. Uh, okay. Sorry. Just needed to take a minute to take that in. All right. V neck top has knot at top of neckline, back keyhole with loop and button closure, sleeve and length variations. Okay. Initially, <laughs> I don't know what to think about this. I think my brain is telling me. Or is it my heart? My heart wants to like it because it kind of looks like a bow. But my brain is telling me something's not right. But then I'm looking at it and I'm like, nothing's wrong. I don't know. I don't know about this one. And that might surprise you guys. I think a lot of you probably saw this and thought, 
I was going to love it immediately, but maybe I don't. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Let's look at more views. <laughs> so here it is in like a little women print. And that has the sash and it's the longer length sleeveless. Here it is with the bubble sleeve and a cuff and little ties. I like the illustrations better than the mock-up. And I don't know if that's because this is like a shirting, like this is structured. And it would be better if it were like a little bit drapier. I don't know. Back with the keyhole, you can see the facing here as well. Your sleeve also has a little bit of like um, ruffling to it. So it's not like a set in, set in sleeve. There is a little bit of gathering on the top, which makes it a little bit easier to put in. Yeah, I, I want to like it. And maybe if I see some other versions of other people making it, I'll be more inclined. All right. The back of the envelope, cotton blends, lightweight poplin, crepe, and chalet. Um, a button for the back, the one-inch elastic, and then three-eighths inch of elastic if you're going to do the one with the little elastic sleeve. The longer version, it takes just under two yards of fabric and the same for um, the other two. Well, top C with the sleeves, I think. Yeah, C has the sleeve, so that takes a little bit more fabric as well. I was kind of hoping it didn't take that much because if it didn't take a lot, then I would be more inclined to like try it out. I wonder if the tunic, the sleeveless version, done at this high hip length, if you could get it down to like eh, one and a half, one and a quarter yards maybe, depending on your size. The bust line measurement is 37 to 53 and a half. Waistline goes up to 52. And then the lower edge, which I like to use as a hip measurement, even though it's not your full hip, it will help um, determine a hip measurement is uh, the longer version is 57 inches and the longer version would be a hip measurement, right? Um, and then the shorter version just comes in an inch. So you can get an idea of, you know, how full the hip is there. Okay, what is next? I do feel like we have a lot of patterns, so that's good. Here is a, okay, okay, another top. Relaxed fitting dolman sleeve tops have asymmetrical draped neckline with options for flutter sleeves or elastic casing. Jewel neckline top has wide gathered sleeves. Tops have keyhole with loop and button closure. Okay, so this is pretty fun. They're doing it, you know, tucked in, which I don't think I've worn anything tucked in in a minute, um, especially to like a, pencil skirt, but I guess they're kind of banking on people maybe going back to the office. I know some of my friends are definitely going through that and <laughs> figuring out what am I going to wear after I go back to work. Um, so we have this little twisty loo top uh, neckline with this cutout. That is really interesting to me. The grown on sleeve, so nothing set in here. And then a little elastic casing. Um, you can see this one does also pulls away from her arm a little bit, but not as much as those other ones that we saw. I don't see any darting at all. Um, that's more of just like the relaxed fit sleeve. There it is without any neckline adorning at all. And then, okay, good. Thank you for showing it untucked. So we have the keyhole back. And it sits at your high hip. That's the finished length of it. What kind of fabrics, I'm wondering. I do like this detail a lot. You know me, I am a basic with a twist girl. And this is quite literally a basic with a twist. Um, 
I could see myself doing it in lots of different fabrics. I'd be more inclined to do it out of a knit, and I don't think this is not drafted for knits. Yardage. Yeah, charmeuse, cotton blends, crepe de chine, double georgette, poplin, shirtings, or silky types. I'd have to look through this stash and see if there's something that I, I mean, a woven top. I, I don't know how I would style a woven top anymore. Obviously, back in the day, I'd just throw it on with jeans, but I'm really trying to not wear jeans. <laughs> not because I don't like jeans. They're just not super comfortable on me, I guess, and they kind of feel like a crutch a little bit. So, I don't know. I'd have to think about this one because I do love that neckline. Maybe even if I just used it as, like, the bodice for a dress, I could see myself maybe even lengthening it to just be, like, a little shift dress. I don't know, but this feels fun. It feels fun. I just don't know how I would practically wear it. I wouldn't wear it like this. More like this, but that, to me, is why I kind of thought it would be better out of a knit. Um because it looks more like a t-shirt, you know, but a woven shirt over just paint. I don't know. Like I said, I'd have to think. I'd have to think. I'm sure I could make it cute with like some shorts or something, but anyways. Um, okay. So you need one button and elastic and that is it. We have the quote unquote extended size range for misses six to 24 um, yardage wise top a, and I'm always forgetting which is a, a is the flutter sleeve version, so that's just under two yards. And then when you go to make B, which is the version the model is wearing, um, one and three quarters of a yard up to. And then C is the like similar to the one model is wearing, but without any of the neck stuff. That's one and five eight, so a little bit less there. Finish measurement at the bust line A and B. Interesting. So you have a different bust line measurement if you do the neckline thing than if you don't. By two and a half yards. I mean, two and a half inches. That's wild. And then the lower edge, aka your high hip, is 38 to 53 and a half. That's so interesting to me. Um... And then, I don't know, did we see the line drawings? Yeah, we did. And there, like I said, there is no darting. So in a way, couldn't you make it out of a knit? Especially something somewhat stable and not super stretchy, like a 30% cotton jersey or something. And then just eliminate the center back seam, eliminate the keyhole, you just pull it all over your head. I might try that. All right, now we've got a pretty plain top here. It is a knit top with side slits is really what I'm getting. Updated t-shirt, sized for stretch knits, have elbow length sleeves with or without button closures and side seam openings. Short sleeve or sleeveless top have side seam button closure. Back views have the option for a peekaboo opening. What? So this is the t-shirt with the side slits. Okay. Oh. There's a button there. I'm not quite sure what the purpose of a button on the inside of your sleeve is, but okay. That's the printed version of what the model's wearing. Then you can do these buttons here. Oh, that's the peekaboo opening. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. Well, I mean, hmm. If I hadn't seen this little detail a thousand times, I think Love Notions has a version that they just released. I, like, hacked a pattern to include this years ago. I mean, like, five years ago. Um, so it doesn't feel that new and updated and fresh to me. Especially, again, when we go to these, like, basic, basic things, 
like t-shirts, it's hard for me to justify spending even $2, $3 at a Joanne sale for a t-shirt when we have so many great patterns for free. Um, or even versions that just are better <laughs> than this one. Like the Love Notions tee is $5 and I feel like is way, I mean, granted it doesn't have the peekaboo, it doesn't have the button details, but I'm not so certain I even love those. Um, yeah, I guess it just comes down to personal style. If you like this design or not, I'm not a fan. Not enough of a, it's not, there's nothing to be a fan of or not, you know, it's just so basic. And I guess these little things they tried to add to make it less basic just feel old. Like we were doing this a long time ago. This I already illustrated. I did five years ago. So I don't know. Moderate stretch knits, interlock, jacquard, jersey, ITY, single knit, bamboo, rib knit, um, then these are the buttons that you need. And then we have eight to 16 and 16 to 24 is the size range. One and three eighths for a, and again, I forgot what a is. So a is the model version. Well, I don't know the difference between a and B couldn't tell you. C has the buttons and D is sleeveless. Okay. So they should all be about the same. Yeah. They're all roughly the same. Bus line measurement. I'm probably going to, uh, if we don't have zero ease, maybe a little bit of negative ease here. But either way, it fits a 32 and a half to 47. And then waistline and lower edge shouldn't really matter too much. Okay, next up we have Mrs. Pants and Shorts. Oh man, a pleated, tapered pant. Is this really happening? Plate front pants have fly front zipper, side pockets, waistband with carriers, and back welt pockets. View A is tapered leg pant, view B is a wide leg pant, and view C is shorts. Designed by Patty Palmer. From Palmer and Plush. Okay, that makes it a little bit more redeeming because Palmer and Plush is like going to help you with the fit, right? So obviously we're hearkening back to like a very classic design because you're going to spend a lot of time getting the perfect fit on these. Um, you could turn the pleats into darts. That would help. Um, we've got a fully functioning fly, some kind of side pocket, deep hem, very deep hem taken there. Maybe they just altered it for her, but, um, but yeah, there's the little short. Yeah. So she's also going to have you like fit a pant in a pretty uh, classic type of fit. So, which is what's being represented here, right? This looks very, oh God, I'm trying not to use all negative words. It's just not very modern fit. Okay. Um, which again, some of you probably love. Others of you are like, wait, no, that's not what pants look like in the stores these days. I get that too. But I guess if you're looking to get a perfect fitting pants, you're going to not try and go super, super fitted or even slim fit because then it just becomes harder to fit. So maybe that's why she opted for a pant with a lot more ease at the waist, at the hip. So there you have it. Those are my thoughts on that. Here are the line drawings. Very classic. I should try a little short like this. I do have fabric, bottom weight fabric that I got for shorts. 
and then became afraid of pants. <laughs> so I just sat in my stash and I haven't wanted to use it for like elastic waist anything. You know, I've wanted to really try and find a shorts pattern. Maybe Patty's is the way to go and she can help me with fit. Plus, you know, the little bit that I've learned kind of on my own. Yardage wise. Okay. Fabrics are gabardine, linen, cotton blends, poplin, twill, obviously suiting, you know, any of those good structured bottom weights, um, hook and bar closure, nine inch zipper, self, um, double-sided adhesive fabric tape. That's how she installs her zippers. Um, elastic for fitting and, or stay tape or, and stay tape. Um, eight to 16 and 16 to 24 on the size range. And then up to two and a half yards for view A, which is the tapered version. View B is the wide leg version and view C is the shorts. Waistline finished 30, I'm sorry, 25 and a half up to 40. And then your hip line finished. There's, you can just tell there's a lot of ease in the hip. Yeah, maybe, maybe, Patty. We'll have to see. Okay, I'm going to stop with that now. We have pajamas. The Mrs. Top nightgown and shorts. Loose, loose fitting pullover top. Believe it or not, I know you guys probably don't think this, but I do edit out some of my thoughts. Some of them make it out of my mouth. Some of them do not. <laughs> and I had a longer than usual pause there looking at this pattern because I was debating on whether I should say what's in my mind or not. But it, I was just saying it's, it was something along the lines of she has that look in her eye like she just woke up. Um, you know, a little bit like off into the distance, like just like I just woke up. I'm not really all here. So I was thinking she's a very good actress. Loose fitting pullover top and nightgowns have square neck bands with sleeve and hem variations. Shorts have elastic waist. I was also thinking how weird this fabric is for a nightgown, but there is like a yoke situation with some gathers here. They tacked on a little ribbon, threw in a little bit of um, lace trim flutterish sleeve and then a hem band gather there is that this is a, this is a lot of work for a nightgown guys this here is not for the faint of heart this is a very challenging construction wise uh, again a lot for pajamas a lot for nobody to see but you and your family The representation among the illustrations is nice to see. This is our first Asian illustration. Yeah, it's just like all a little crooked, you know, like lopsided. Yeah, I mean, it's cute. If I thought that I had the brain power to put this together, for a pajama, I'd like it a little bit more, but trust me, that square neckline miter thing is very difficult. Not to say that it couldn't be a, a you make it out of fabric you wear outside. I mean, this is a little nightgowny with the sleeve, but like this would work. I think this could be cute. Nothing to say about these shorts. Okay, so yardage wise, cotton batiste, lightweight satin, eyelet, lightweight cotton, and lightweight flannel. And then you have contrast lace or eyelet, bias tape, elastic, lace, and ribbon. Okay. Um, the top is a quarter yard, and then as we get longer into the nightgowns, they require more fabric, obviously. And then the shorts are one and a half-ish. Um, 
very loose fitting in the bust line and the waistline and the hip line. So lots of ease all around, which I guess is ideal for a nightgown. All right, then we've got a little dress, one with a crossover, one without. These illustrations are too much. And then a um, little preteen and then some more baby Lukes. All right, so Butterick after a six month hiatus or maybe longer. What do we think? What do we think? I have mixed feelings. I love the classicness of it all, right? Not super trendy, but still like fresh feeling. That's what I think I love about Butterick. But also, I don't know if there's anything that I'm like dying to have. So I'm interested to know what your thoughts are about this. Uh, maybe this was just kind of like a soft opening, a soft re-entry, <laughs> you know what I mean? Nice and safe. Um, I think safe is a good way to explain it. But I'd love to know what you guys thought. If there's any of these patterns that you're going to be running to grab, um, let me know in the comments section below. Otherwise, I've linked to last week's First Impression Friday, which was for an Etsy shop called Daria Pattern Making, uh, which is fully into the trends. So it'll be two very um, opposite ends of the spectrum for you. But if you want to watch that, click the bottom right corner of your screen. Otherwise, that's going to do it for me today, y'all. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you very soon. Bye!